Hi everybody, this is Material Girl 338, otherwise known as Diane. Today I'm going to be making a, a magnificent dish that my mother's been making for years. Um, it's old and she was a great cook. So, and I learned as a kid, you know, she used to make me fry the veal cutlets, bread the veal cutlets, uh, you know, and you're in the kitchen. Chop up the celery, do this, do that. Before you know it, you're learning. So, I was always in the kitchen because I was always hungry. I always wanted to eat. I love food. And uh, this recipe is her recipe. So, what I have here is I have uh, ribs on the bone. I have some fresh thyme. And I don't know if you guys know, thyme never goes dormant. It stay, you know, it grows all year long. And I'm on the East Coast in New Jersey. And my thyme is beautiful. I have one cup of uh, opichi, which is a burgundy wine. Have some frozen carrots. I have here some uh, frozen uh, green onion. Have some garlic. I'm not using all this garlic, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave it whole because I'm not chopping it up. I have some onion. I'm not using all this onion. A fresh parsley. Of course, salt and pepper. This is um, freeze-dried my leeks. I freeze-dry whatever I could. This is freeze-dried celery. I don't have celery right now, so I ran out of it. So, using freeze-dried. And then this is uh, a bay leaf. And I have a little bit of paste. So, this is all going to be done in my Dutch oven. But I'm going to take you uh, step by step. So with this short ribs, I season them with a little bit of salt and pepper. So I did one side. I'm going to turn them over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to braise these. Meanwhile, I have the oven going at 425 or 420. And it's getting preheated. You sprinkle some salt. And some pepper. Okay. My friends, what I'm doing is I'm heating up some extra virgin olive oil in my Dutch oven and I have a pan waiting I'm my pan waiting so I'm gonna glaze the not glaze it I'm gonna like uh, sear it so but the oil has to be hot don't put the meat in when the oil is cold because it's just not gonna give it a crisp uh, outer edge so that's what you <clears throat> are aiming for Meanwhile, I'm going to open up my bay leaf or two. Oh, maybe I'll take three. And these bay leaves, what I do is um, you find them in the store, they're fresh. They're well, usually in the in the uh, vegetable section. I take them and I put them in my dehydrator. Okay, so my oil is hot. If you see tin foil around my stove, I just cleaned the stove yesterday, and every time I clean it, I end up frying something. So put the meat in and wait a, a second because. That previous meat is cold, and it cools down the oil a little bit. Okay, once you put the meat in, I, I definitely need a new one, right? And I, I haven't gotten to the store because... I haven't been feeling too good. I, I think I have a, a cold or something. <laughs> but I definitely need a screen. So this is going to seal. 
and it's going to take a couple of minutes. Don't move it, don't touch it, don't, you know, push it. Just leave it alone because you want the uh, outer edge of the meat to get nice and sealed. And then once that is brown on that side, I'll turn it over. Okay, I just turned over one piece. It's beautiful. See, if you don't disturb the meat, I don't want to dirty my stove. If you don't disturb the meat when you first put it in it, and you just leave it alone, <clears throat> it won't stick to the bottom of your pan. When you disturb it, that's when it sticks, because it's got to build up that, that coating, okay? Okay, my friends, the uh, other side is cooked. And now what I'm doing is just turning it on the side, the meat on the side. So each side cook. I'm going to do it to all four sides. Okay, let's turn it around again. Everybody, they should, they should be brown. Okay, I'm just gonna set them aside. When you do that, you, the meat, the juice from the meat comes out. So now, in the hot oil, I'm going to add my garlic. I'm going to lower the heat a little bit because I don't want to burn them. I'm going to add my onions. I'm going to add the two bay leaves. Three bay leaves. My freeze dried celery. My freeze dried leeks. My parsley. Now the carrots are frozen, so what's going to happen is this is going to get watery, and I really don't want it to get watery, so I want this to cook a little bit. I want it to saute a little bit. Because you got the garlic in here too, and you want the flavor of the garlic to uh, penetrate. And what I did was I tied my um, thyme up in a but I'm going to add this later. All right, so now I'm going to add the carrots, and it's going to get watery, so I have to let that go down. I'm going to add the uh, green onion.
I may need some more carrots. So I'll just take some more out. that like I freeze my uh, vegetables these are carrots and what I do is I blanch them for one minute and then I take them out cool the water down drain them put them in that spinner that lettuce spinner and then I put them in a bag and I freeze them but you want carrots you got them I'm going to just add some salt here Now this has got to cook because I got it on low. I'm going to raise it up now because the carrots, because they're frozen, made everything cold. Right? So this is going to cook and then I'll come back. Okay, so you could see that the carrots have a lot of water because they're frozen. If you don't have frozen, you could use regular, just fresh um, carrots. It doesn't matter because this is going to... This is going to evaporate, and then it's going to get nice sautéed. But I gotta, you know, cook it first. Okay, all that water will evaporate. Okay, it's really cooking down. I don't want it to cook too too down. I'm gonna add some paste. Some more paste. And now I'm going to throw in going to add a little bit of wine. some chicken pork. This is going to be strained. Salt. Needs a lot of salt. All right. This I'm going to put. And while I'm going to cover it, and I want to bring it up to its first little boil. Everybody, you see that the uh, the marinade is boiling. I brought the heat up a little bit. Now I'm going to put back the ribs 
in my crock pot. I can't tell you how how amazingly this dish smells. It, it's like make my whole house is smell of red wine. Delicious. Any juices? Draw them in. Now what I'm going to do is I can't do this now while I've got the tripod here. I'm going to cover this and I'm putting it in my oven and I'm going to cook it on low for about four to five hours. Maybe around, I'm going to fool around with the temperature, but I'll tell you at the end what I put the temperature at. Now I started it at 350, so, and I'm going to do this for about five hours maybe because you want the meat to fall off the bone, okay? Friends, it's been about, um, I'd say around three and a half, almost four hours. And I just took this out of the oven and I cooked it. I first put the oven on at 350 for maybe about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. And then I turned it down to 300. And now I'll show you what it looks like. It's very hot. The pot is very, very hot. Look at the steam. It's making the camera. to get this open it, it is fall off the bone I can't tell you how amazing my house smells you smell the red wine it's just an aroma that just makes you want to stop sit down and eat anyway guys this is, it's a perfect dish. It came out beautiful. It, as you see, it's full off the bone. I'm not going to move it around too much. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments, please post them below. I love to interact with my fellow YouTubers. And please subscribe to my channel because I always have other videos coming in. And I'm thinking about, I'm in the process of making a cookbook. Uh, I think I have a lot of good recipes. So, um, hopefully, maybe you guys, you will buy it once I publish it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a great day.